Well, guys, we are finally here. <laughs> we are finally here with Jeff Mariani from Cedars Island Fishing Charters. Jeff, I know it's been quite the uh, quite the forty five minutes with you with technical difficulties, but we're finally here. How are you, man? Man, I, I feel good. I feel good. Thank you for having me. Uh, sorry to everybody, of course. Like, uh, we uh, who knows? I don't know. We we restarted our computers, and now everything's working. Like. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> For sure, man. Well, uh, while we let everyone uh, get going here, Jeff, I know we've all had uh, help, had quite the 2020 and quite the year. And uh, I know Cedrus, uh, I know Cedrus had that, had, had its own year, but uh, how, how are you, man? What, uh, what have you been up to and uh, what's shaking down at Cedros? Uh, you know, I, I've been great, uh, just working, working hard here. Uh, you know, Katie and I just trying to uh, get, you know, get people signed up, uh, get everything figured out, uh, down there for us, um, get our crew all lined up, you know, everyone's they're eager to go and we're, we're ready to start fishing for sure. Um, we're, we're going to be starting up mid June, uh, is when we're going to get going uh, this year. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're real excited. You know, there's some good fishing going on down there and, uh, that's what I was uh, hoping to talk about today, you know, uh, stick strictly to a lot of the techniques and uh, it, like exact lures that I, I use with the guys down there. And uh, I think that uh, with the island having a year off like it has, uh, the fishing is going to be, you know, fantastic down there, I'd imagine. Obviously, uh, we have some pretty great fishing going on for ourselves around here locally, too. So we just have to probably feel super blessed that we have all these great opportunities within, you know, a, a half of a day of travel, really, so. For sure, and you kind of just touched on what I want to get into. With everything kind of putting on pause for 2020 and all that, that island has not been touched for over a year. I can only imagine what's going down there right now and what's to come here in the summer. Yeah, uh, you know, Katie and I went down uh, in April, late April, uh, we brought her husband, Carl, uh, I brought a very good friend and a great client, Chris Minnick, with uh, with us, and we went down there. And in 57 degree water, you know, we were having 150, 160 fish days on the on the bass. Um, so I would have to think that everything is uh, shaping up for some really good fishing down there. We found quite a bit of kelp. There was tons of bait, which is always a great sign. Uh, my guys have been sending me videos of what's been going on. They, you know, they get out uh, often with friends on their boats and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, that's why I decided today I was going to talk about tackle because uh, watching some of the videos and watching, you know, my guys, I mean, they have pretty good stuff and they're still getting, they're getting smoked right now. Like there's some big fish around the Island. Um, and that I think just, it bodes well for everyone who's going. Doesn't matter if you're traveling with me or with one of the other tours. There's going to be some really great fishing uh, if you get taken to the right areas. Excellent. So let's let's start at the beginning, man. I know uh, you know you've been down there for quite a while now, and uh, let's talk about a little bit about uh, yeah, I guess your background and also the background of Cedros kayak fishing, which is now Cedros Island uh, fishing charters too. Exactly. Yeah. So it's been, I think this is my ninth year of being down there. Uh, and it started just by traveling with one of the other tours, uh, kind of fell in love with the place. Uh, I've always loved Baja, just never really had a chance to, uh, you know, get down there often. I always had a serious job. I was in the carpenters union for several years. So, uh, you know, had to, had to stay working always. Um, so I missed a lot of the good surf trips down to Baja, but Baja has always been a place I love. And, uh, once I got to Cedros, man, it, it, Everything that I like to do is right there. Like literally everything I like to do. There's waves on that island. There's great beach combing on that island. There's fun hiking. Uh, if I brought a mountain bike over there, it'd be ridiculous mountain biking. If you if I had a motorcycle, same thing, crazy. And like, yeah, I guess we could mention the fishing. You know what I mean? Like the fishing's all right over there. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't matter what time of year I've gone there in my nine years. I could be there dead of January. Um, right place, right conditions, find the current, find some bait and there's good fishing opportunities there. So it's that Island to me is everything that I like. It's my spot. You know, everyone should be as lucky I think as me to like find their spot, you know, and Cedros is that for me, it's my spot. 
I love all the people there. Uh, there it's, it's my community. I, I call it my Island all the time. And it's for a reason, you know, I'm, I'm, we're embedded uh, down there with all the, all the different uh, families. I spend a lot of money in town. You know, we, we have people that work for us, you know, you know, seven or, or 10 families that work for us, you know, and, and those guys stay working year round. You know, we keep them busy at the house, you know what I mean? Cause that's, they're part of our family, you know, and uh, we, we just, uh, we feel so lucky. And Katie, I got to see it in her face. You know, I, she, you know, she got to see the house for the first time uh, and kind of just hang out, you know, at night, you know, we're, you know, having fires in the fireplace and it's just so quiet. You don't hear a thing. Um, she really uh, got to see, you know, she, she feels my vision and that's why she's pushing this so much with me. Um, we're, we're just, we're really lucky, you know, and, and then now here comes, you know, sure. Yeah. We had a year off, but uh I think uh, it's, it's gave us a good opportunity to kind of plan for what's about to happen. Um, and I feel really ready. I got, I got some good spots that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm kind of fish different than everyone over there. I really like to move around, like uh, not in the same day, like, but what I mean by move around is I don't, you know, I might fish the South end of the Island one day, but the next day I'm not fishing there, you know, and my best fish report for me, seriously on that Island. And I, I know people might think I'm crazy, but when one of those other boats tells me that there's no fish somewhere, man, I'm going there the next day. Like, because they just don't fish our style. You know, um, I got a, I've developed a pretty unique fishing style over there. Um, the clients that come down, like they get to kind of, uh, experience that with me, which is super fun. Um, I'm showing them how to fish with kind of like maybe extra heavy bass gear basically, but you're pulling on big yellows and you're winning. And, uh, it's kind of fun. It's fun to watch guys come down. A lot of guys, you know, it's all, everyone's got different experience level. Um, but it, it, it doesn't matter by the end of the trip, like they leave there with, uh, you know, even the most experienced guy comes down and learns a little something new about fishing the kelp and, or, you know, or fishing boiler rocks or something like that. And it's just because I get, you know, hundreds of days down there. And I think any fisherman would probably be the same. You know, you get multiple days at an area, you're, you're going to start figuring things out, you know, and, uh, I think that's uh, what kind of sets us apart from everybody else. I'm not there just to chase yellowtail. You know what I mean? Like yellowtail is almost a bycatch to me. Um, you know, we, you focus on the bass because you know you're going to get bit. And that's the goal of going fishing is to get bit. And uh, you can see from the photos over the last four years while we were running and all the videos of, of the guys coming down, very few of those days are we actually there targeting yellows. If you see any of Afrin's uh, stuff, Warbait's uh, videos, you see all that crazy yellowtail stuff. That was after coming home. We were coming home from Benito's fishing bass all day. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the kind of opportunities that we get a lot just from being in the right place, going the right direction, all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, I'm excited, man. I got, I, we have like 130 or 135 people signed up this year. I can't wait to show them what we do. You know what I mean? I I'm enthusiastic about it. I, I go fishing with everyone every day. Like I want to go to a new spot myself, especially when I'm down there for so many days in a row. Like I just kind of get in a rhythm. I got my little program. I base it all off the weather. And, you know, I don't know if I'm going to take you to Benito's tomorrow or Chester's rock or, you know, one spot that I like to go to that's two hours away from town on the backside of Sagos takes us forever to get to, you know, like you never know where we're going to go. It's all based on weather and what the Island tells me to do. Like that's how I fish that place. I let the Island tell me what's happening and that's what we go do. You know what I mean? And we have a great time. So, yeah. So going back, I uh, we'll just want to kind of reference this, that video with Afrin or I guess Afrin's video of yourself and all six of you, I kid you not, if you guys have not seen this video, the video that I think you're referring to is you guys, all six of you were on the bow of a panga and you just happened to come across a freaking bird school of, uh, of yellowtail and all six of you are just bent at all at the same time. And to be honest, it just got my blood boiling. Yeah, it, it, it was a ridiculous moment, really. Like we were, we were coming down the, the south end of the island. It was a long day at Benito's, fish and bass. We were coming down that south end of the island. We were all in that ponga because all the kayaks were in another ponga. And we stopped right there because we needed to uh, change fuel cans. We were getting kind of low right then. And it was just like one of those fluke things. We stopped to change fuel. Somebody looks off in the horizon, sees a few birds. We change the fuel can, start heading that way. Turns into a full eruption of hundreds of yellowtail. 
Hundreds, they were everywhere. You know what I mean? I think we put 19 on the boat or something like that in 25 minutes, something like crazy. Uh, it, it was ridiculously fun. And those are the opportunities that we get quite a bit. And especially with Yellowtail, like if you go down there focused on just experiencing the island and doing everything, don't get so locked in on you need a certain species of fish. Like you're going to, you're going to really have a good time down there and, and experience a great fishery. There's so much going on down there. It, it's, it's unbelievable. Really. It really is. It's Catalina and Clemente and everything that we all like here in Southern California, exactly how it used to be probably years and years ago. Um, and, but it's still going strong down there. Like uh, it's, it, 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 that's all I can really say. I mean, if you just pay attention to that Island, man, it really uh, provides some great fishing. Yeah. And uh, uh, Katie's actually chiming in here in the comments. Hey, Katie, how are you? Uh, I love watching Cedro's videos, slightly obsessed. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff, I know, you know, you're very methodical. You're very, um, uh, I guess, your trips, your charters, granted, I haven't been on one yet, but I'm going this summer. Um you, you put a lot of thought and a lot of effort into all each one of your trips, not just the overall program too. And that, I mean, I really, that says a lot about yourself and the, and the program where, you know, depending on whatever your clients want to do, or depending on giving them a whole experience of the Island and a little bit of both that, I mean, that shows a lot. Yeah. So how, how this all happened, you know, it was by traveling with the other tours and I know what I like, and it seems like there's a lot of people that like what I like. Um, I like my own room. I just do. At night, I love my friends. I love all of you guys. Love you. Love all my clients. Love you. But at night, I need my own space. I think we all do. We rest better. Um, I thought a smaller group that I could be more personal with, get to know everyone. You know what I mean? Like spend time with everyone. You know, like those are the things that were important to me. That's how, that's why it got developed the way it is. It'll never get bigger than that. We'll always only have six people at a time because I want to give everyone that personal feel. Each trip is different, Chris, really. You know, each group is different. When you come down with your friends, the group that follows you, completely different people. You know what I mean? So the beauty of having a small group, the beauty of myself as the owner, operator, and the guy fishing with you, doing it all, like I get to tailor this exactly to your vacation. Like, cause that's what it is. You're on a vacation and you're honoring me with coming with me on your vacation. And I'm, I'm going to show you my Island and I'm going to do everything that you want to do. And my goal is to put you on your personal best. Like if you see some of the videos, you'll see guys all the time saying it. Oh yes. Yeah, my personal best times five. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the fifth time I've got my personal best, you know, like that's my goal that let you come down and experience the fishing. Like I get to, you know, experience, like I just, we seem to find these really good areas to go fish. And, um, I found some lures that work really good on the Island. Uh, we're experimenting all the time with new stuff. Um, but using lighter gear and, you know, uh, all these new bait casters that come out, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm a, I'm a big Okuma guy. Okuma is everything to me. Like I love the Komodo, um, I just kill fish with those things. I mean, it, it, everything, man, I caught the world record with that reel. I, I've caught everything yellows, uh, you know, big calicos, everything. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a all around great reel. Um, I think a lot of guys think they need such a big reel to catch these fish and you really don't. And that's a really fun thing that I'm getting to show people also, uh, with our program. You know, when you, when you just have a few people, man, we can all sit around the fire at night and talk, or I built this huge garage. Cause I love to tackle tinker. That's my deal. I, my stuff is spread out from one end of my garage to the next. So when you come down, that's the same thing you get big six foot table, put all your stuff there, you know, spread out, you're staying for the weekend. You know what I mean? So, um, it, it's, a. Uh, that's how this whole thing kind of started. I just wanted to make it as personal as possible with everybody and, and make them feel like they're at home and they're my buddy. I don't know how else to treat people. You know what I mean? As a host, like you're my, you're my friend. You just became my new friend. Come on down. You're hanging out at my house and Hey, let's go fish, man. I got some cool spots. You know, <laughs> I was just about to say, it seems more, it seems more or less like you're inviting a group of friends over for a, basically a fishing trip. And that that's awesome, man. Yeah. It, it, it's what makes it exciting for me. Uh, most of the guys that come down, they're on their fourth or fifth season with me. You know what I mean? So I know the groups, 
Um, I know what they want to do. Everyone kind of ha like has their bedroom already. It's kind of neat, man. It really is. It's kind of neat. I, I remember look, uh, you know, as I was digging the trenches for the plumbing and stuff, you know, five, six years ago, um, thinking about moments like this, you know what I mean? And I can't, you know, as I'm down there shoveling in that hard rock, you know, like, man, I can't wait to be sitting right here, hanging out with the people. And I wonder if they're going to like the house and what, you know, how are they going to feel about all this, you know? And, uh, man, it's just group after group. They come down, they like everything that we've done. Um, I, I seriously work with the best people on the Island. Like my crew is the, like, wait till you see, dude, wait till you meet these guys, Christian McQueen, Lulu, the lady that cooks for us. Uh, Anna Karen that helps clean, you know, um, Victor who helps in the evenings, our boat captains, the most loyal people you'll meet. You know what I mean? They're just, they're so great to me. They believe in what we're doing down there. Um, they're enjoying themselves. They're having a good time. They love all the clients. The clients love them. It, it's, it really is a pretty, a pretty cool gig. It really, it really is. So let, let's, let's kind of touch on that there where, you know, you had just mentioned that uh, you built or you were digging trenches and all that. Did you actually build your own, your own property there? Yeah, man. Like I did, I did it all. You know what I mean? Oh. With the help of colors of people. Oh yeah. 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 You know, of, of course there was plenty of workers that were there, but like, no, like I didn't task anyone on anything that I wouldn't do, you know, like uh, I, I brought a buddy down from uh, up here that lives in Temecula by me and the big garage that you'll see it's 40 by 25 uh you know big garage we need a lot of space i have one of my boats in there and we just need space for the kayaks and everything else um we we built that in a weekend you know what i mean so it it's uh I, i've had some good help um but yeah man I, I i've done it all down there there's a very small little house that was on the property when i first bought it and we left the walls up and that was it i took the roof off and just went to town from there. You know what I mean? All the plumbing was, uh, you know, above ground. That's kind of how they do things down there. They don't really care, but I didn't want that. Of course, I wanted us to, you know, have what we're used to around here. And um, so, yeah, man, I, you know, like the only way to get, you know, people to help you and get devoted to your program is you got to be in the trenches with them. Right. And that's why my crew, I think is so loyal. We were, you know, all those guys, were there pretty much from the start. You know what I mean? Like after year one, that's when I picked up almost all of those guys and a lot of them helped with doing a lot of the work too. So, um, you know, and they're there all the time doing the maintenance, maintenance on the boats, maintenance on the property, the trucks, everything, keeping it, you know, just in tip top shape. And, um, it's, you know, it's a group effort and, you know, we need those guys to help us, you know, it, with all the little things that they do. And, and uh, everyone has their, their job, basically. You know what I mean? It seems like, and we all work really well together. And uh, yeah, we're just excited, man. Like, I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. Like, I, I want more people to come down and hang out. You know, I want to show you what I do. Like, it's, it's, it's different than what other, what you're used to. It just really is because I own everything. And all these guys work for me. And I'm going fishing with you at the same time. Not only am I hosting you, making sure you got everything you need around the house and all that, but I'm also going to host you while we're fishing, you know, or guide you or whatever you want to call it. Like I, I'm just there, man. Like I'm the one that's there and I'm making sure you're having um, an American style trip. You know what I mean? Like you can feel safe and comfortable that, that you're going to, you're getting what you're paying for. You know, you're coming down, you're asking me to provide you a service. I'm going to go way above and beyond. I guarantee it. That's, it's my goal. You know what I mean? It's what I do. You know what I mean? It definitely shows not only in your, uh, not in not only in, through your website, your videos, your clients' videos as well. Definitely shows, man, for sure. I can't help yeah. to notice you've got something in your hand. Nice little tool there. <laughs> yeah, man. I keep shaking it around. It's like my favorite thing. I don't know. I'm sure everyone can see this right here. You know, if you do, if you come to Cedros and you show up without an, a Daiwa SP minnow or a Mac stick or from Savage Gear, if you do not show up with one of these. I guess you got to come by the tackle shop. Then you could spend money with me. That's fine. You know what I mean? I don't mind, but you guys like, this is what you, this is the kind of stuff that we need to fish when it's live bait time. I will let you know, but for the rest of the time, like you should be trying to throw something artificial. That's what we like to do with our people. Like I, we make live bait, but again, it's just like yellowtail. There's a time and a place to make live bait. I think I watch these boats waste hours of their morning making bait and 
Sometimes it's not even good bait making where they are. And then they get to the spot and it's ridiculous. There's bait everywhere and you can make your bait in five minutes. You know what I mean? So there's a time and a place, but yes, you must come down to our place or anywhere with a Daiwa SP minnow or a Mac stick or if Shimano is your thing. And that's the, you know, confidence is everything. If Shimano is your brand, then bring the Shimano lure, you know, whatever it takes because you must have a stick bait. And I tell everyone also, 100 gram flat fall this catches calico bass to giant bluefin tuna <laughs> it's the best eight dollars you'll ever spend trust me you know what i mean like they're, they're it's a great lure um and the thing about the fish on sagros is they destroy your lures so the lures that i'm recommending like these are tried and true strong durable last your whole trip type lure you know unless you're not breaks and you lose your lure but you know, there's a lot of other lures out there that they're just, they don't hold up. There's a lot of reels that I have fished for one day and tried to take it out the next day. And the thing just did not hold up. If you catch a hundred calicos in a day, you know, 50, 60 calicos, even maybe add in a yellow or two with the same tackle, like you're beating up your tackle. You need to have good stuff, good quality gear. Um, that's why, you know, any of the things I recommend that that stuff has definitely been tried and true. Like I, I put these Komodos to the test. I know Okuma is worldwide. They do tons of testing worldwide, but I'll tell you what, man, day after day, these things continue to just hammer fish for me. Hammer. I cast this SP minnow a mile. People are like, they ask me, I don't, I'm not that great of a cast caster. You know what I mean? But it's just it, when you, if you're going to use good gear, like that's when you end up with good casting and you know, that presentation is everything, you know, you can throw this thing out there, but if you throw it in the wrong spot, again, you know, you're just, you're, you're not, you're not doing what you need. If people want to start coming down plastics and stuff like that, like I got to show up some of Corey's things. This is my new favorite for bass, the weedless. I'm showing you my favorite colors. I call this thing gold bar. It's kind of hard, hard to see. Um, brown top with the gold belly. It's, this one and the gray belly if you ask corey for the gold bar or the gray belly he's going to know exactly what you're talking about and these are my two favorite baits for catching calico bass anywhere from bonitos to chester's rock anywhere on cedros if you're in the kelp or if the fish are up like this is the kind of stuff i'm throwing for sure and uh don't be afraid to bring that kind of stuff down a lot of people bring down a lot of lead heads and i think they bring down two small lead heads so my tip to everyone is don't waste your time bringing down a three quarter ounce lead head. You, you don't need it. What you need is like a two ounce lead head. You can still cast that two ounce lead head in shallow water. You just have to start cranking right away. But when we're fishing deeper and we fish a lot of plastics deeper, all of those big white sea bass I got in 2019 all came on a war baits lead head, two ounce lead head with a five inch swim bait. That's all I was using. But what made this work was when I casted it out, even in a small pocket, the two ounce lead head pulled this thing down and made the tail swim. So this thing was swimming as it was sinking. And it's because of that heavier lead. They kind of swim okay with the three quarter ounce, but man, you start using a heavier lead head. It's probably the tip of the day for everybody. Another thing is with these things, like there's a ton of manufacturers out there, but Afrin stuff holds up to 60 pound white sea bass in the kelp. It holds up to big groupers. It holds up to 40 plus pound yellowtail. Like it, it's all about the hook and how these things are manufactured. And I know people worry about costs and this and that. Well, you're gonna cost yourself the fish of your life is what you're gonna do. You know what I mean? Spend the extra couple bucks and get the right equipment. Like that's, I tell everyone, I, I, I pound it into the people that come with me. I pound it in, into their heads. Like it's very important to bring the right gear. I'm gonna put you on the good fish. And it's up to you to land it with the right gear. But if you bring down the wrong stuff, like then it's going to make it very hard. You know what I mean? To, to You're going to have a lot of like those heartbreaks, you know, and I see it on a lot of trips, you know, like a lot of guys come down, Oh, I, you know, my line's great or, or whatever. And they've got splices in their spectra down a hundred yards. You're going to get to that splice. You will get to that knot. If you hook a big yellow, those things take incredibly long. Their first run is usually their longest and they're going to get to that knot and they're going to test your stuff and see if, if you've done what you're supposed to. It's, 
it's the number one tip I can give everybody is bring down the gear that's recommended to you by the people, whoever you're traveling with, really. So the moral of the story is you need to not only, you know, get all your gear serviced and all that stuff, make sure your gear is already tuned up, ready to go. And then also, uh, you know, you brought out your SP Minnow. I know I like fishing the, this guy, the toothpaste. Oh, yeah. Also, you know, it's, it, you know, Wayne mentioned on the comments there, changing out your hooks is pretty important too on those. Huge. On the six inch lure, uh, Daiwa makes two sizes, six and three quarter and the six inch. I don't even throw the six inch anymore. I pretty much only so throw the six and three quarter. But on that six inch, it's mandatory that you switch the split rings and the hooks. You have to you have to use that owner hyperwire uh, split ring, and you have to use the owner uh, four times strong hook. What, what happens at Cedros, especially in, in a lot of places, probably happens at Clemente and Catalina. But you'll hook a bass on your front hook, but there will be a cloud of bass chasing them, you know. And then you'll hook another one, and then they start fighting each other while you're reeling them in, and they just rip the hooks right off your bait. So you have to upgrade uh, the six and three quarter. You do not have to upgrade anything. The only thing I recommend for people to do is add a split ring to the nose. And then a lot of times I switch out the rear hook to a, a five aught live bait hook is what I use. My Gamagatsu live bait hook. I put one of those on the back. What that does with this floating model is as you're reeling this thing back and you try to reel as fast as you can, the, it'll start skipping out of the water. And if you've ever seen bait fish that are really running for their lives, a lot of times they're jumping out of the water. And so you really mimic a bait fish. And we've had some really good success by changing out that back hook to a single hook. Your hookup ratio too is really good. Like it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't come out. You know what I mean? Like if they get, if they get it on that back hook. Yeah. And you know, just with the fish alone, I mean, I haven't changed out anything in this guy, but you know, this thing's already beat up. We've, but I've only fished it maybe once or twice and it's already beat up and all that. I can only imagine what the fish are going to be down there, like down there, but having, you know, I know Katie just mentioned that you guys had 300 calicos in two, two days. Yeah. I mean, you kind of have to make sure your gears kind of fine tuned there. <laughs> yeah, it, for sure. And, you know, I just noticed something on your, on your jig uh, there, you use a clip and I've never gotten comfortable with those things. I know there's a lot of guys, use them. And I, you know, I can't say that I recommend them. I, I just don't, I, I've seen too many fish lost so far with those things. Um, and so like for myself, I, I haven't, I haven't gotten used to those things yet. Um, I, you know, plenty of guys have come down and use them, you know, so to, you know, to each their own, I know there's always a lot of questions about that, you know, guys w always want to know. And, um, it doesn't impede the lure. That's for sure. It gives it probably more action if anything, um, I just don't like all the fish that I see lost. You know, it's just, uh, I'd rather, you know, I use a four foot piece of leader. Um, I retie every yellowtail mandatory retie, at least for me, I'm using 55 pound also minimum and I'm still retying, you know, it's, uh, because your next fish could be another big yellow. And a lot of times we're in pretty shallow, you know what I mean? And, um, it, whether you're on the Ponga or in the kayak, you know, you have to be, ready and your gear has to be ready and uh you know not failure is kind of one of the the biggest things i see um down there within in within my group you know what i mean yeah and speaking of Daiwa, mr greg johnson is in the house what's going on greg matt florentino is checking in you don't want to mess around and see just come correct and fish the right gear absolutely 100 uh, percent. carrie sherwood is in the house what's going on carrie she's asking how do you determine how many people can go on a trip to Cedros? So for me, we're, you know, we would take a group of four. That's probably the smallest group I'd want to go with. Um, but maximum for me is six people. I only have a seven bedroom house. So like that's helps me, you know, if I don't have any more bedrooms then I can't take more people. Right. <laughs> so I try to keep it down. You know, the, the smaller group mentality, it's just the way I work. It, it makes it more fun. Uh, makes it more personable. Uh, it's very easy for me to please every single person then at that point. If someone wants to do something special and different from the rest of the group, I have enough equipment down there. I could pretty much make just about anything work, really. And if I needed to do something different, hire another boat for a day because someone wanted something special, like I, I have the means and having the smaller groups is, is the way I get to do that. You know, speaking, uh, one thing we haven't really touched on 
And it's important that everyone who comes down to Cedros is like sun protection. Um, along with our gear, you know, sun protection is key. You know, hearing that Matt chimed in, you know, I had some things that I was going to show hold up that, you know, a lot of people bring and sometimes don't bring. But this right here, and you'll see it in a lot of my videos, you see like gloves. You always see me in long sleeves because the sun's beat you up. You see me in long pants because, man, you get burned. You see me in shoes and socks even, like, because your pants roll up a little bit and I got shoes on and then I get burned right across the top of my ankle, like, you know, bad. So I'm even wearing socks. But these gloves, like the top of our hands are take a beating, you know, and these gloves that uh, Matt's company have made, like, they're so comfortable. You have an open palm. You have your fingers exposed so you can feel your fingertips. You can tie knots. You can feel your wheel. They actually give you grip on your reel. And as your stuff starts getting wet from all your casting and everything else, like that really helps. And um, the, it helps protect your hands. Like people come down on these long, you know, two, three, four day trips with me, five day trips. And if you're not protecting your hands, if you catch 50 or 60 calicos your first day, your hands are tore up. And by day three, you're so sore. You can't even, you're like this trying to hold your reel, you know? <laughs> so all this kind of stuff is so important. Um, and uh, you know, I, I'm AFCO head to toe. Like when I'm out there, it's, it's mandatory. You, you just get, I mean, you can see my face now. I, I wear the stuff to work because you just get burned up, man. The sun's hard on you anymore, you know? So, um, it's protecting yourself so that you can withstand the two or three days of fishing that I'm going to take you on. It's like, it's real important, you know, guys come out and I see someone, uh, come outside the first day in shorts and I tell them they need pants and they always tell me, oh, I'll be fine, you know, and most of the time guys are about like, like me, you know, size 36 waist, you know what I mean? But, um, like Matt has given us a lot of stuff. So I have a lot of like different pants. And so I always put them in the Ponga because by 10 or 11 o'clock, I mean, literally that soon, because the sun is just beating down on your legs. Like the dude is burnt. And if I let him get super fried, he won't last this whole trip. You know what I mean? So everyone needs to really, you know, pay attention to that sun protection, drinking tons of water. Like we, I put five gallons of water on every Ponga. I tell everyone that are coming in my group, bring your, your water flask, your hydro flask. And then if you're in the kayaks or you're in the Ponga, I got five gallons and we're just filling you up all day. It's all nicely chilled. And, you know, staying hydrated is how you withstand three hard days of fishing at Cedros. It really is. Yeah. And let's, uh, you know, we haven't really talked about the kayak side of things too. Um, I know people can go kayak fishing down there with you as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like we, we changed the name because we wanted people to know that we, we do ponga fishing as well. Um, Sejo's kayak fishing, you know, that, that it sounds, you know, if someone looks us up online, they might think that we're just so very specific to kayaking. Um, but no, we do, you know, I'll leave those things in the garage, no problem. And we'll go fish the pongas. That's, I got no problem doing that. So, um, that was kind of Katie's idea. You know what I mean? To brainstorm that and, and, you know, get, get the word out better that, you know, that we do more than just one thing. Um, and, uh, but yeah, we, you know, I'm exclusive Hobie. I'll never be anything else. Like those are the best kayaks. Yes. They cost a lot of money, but there's a reason why, because that thing's durable last long. I put those things through the ropes, man. And my crew takes phenomenal care of those things. And they're, they just, they last every single trip. You know what I mean? They're just year after year. They just keep going. They're, they're great. They, they're very stable. We catch big fish on those things. And, uh, you know, they just, uh, they, they stand the test of time with us. Like we're, they're in the salt water, you know, every day, you know what I mean? hundred, 200 days a year over there with us. And, and, uh, so those, you know, those, those are the best boats. Um, we have all the goodies, Morgan and, and Kevin and, and Howie, um, have given us everything. You know what I mean? Like I have every single thing, you know, even flags, I mean, stuff we don't even use. It seems like, you know what I mean? But it, it's fun. It's fun to have all the options. Uh, Lawrence also, you know, Morgan hooked us up with Lawrence and Lawrence, uh, you know, has nice, uh, color fish finder GPSs on all of our boats. And, um, you know, we're very thankful, you know, for that as well. Um, so, um, that, that's what makes it fun. If you, if you go someplace and they don't have good equipment, like, man, it's not so fun. You know what I mean? But if you go someplace and they got better equipment than you got at home, man, you're going to have a good time. You know what I mean? And we take really good care of our stuff and we make sure you take good care of our stuff. Cause I want it to last. There's someone coming on a trip after you that wants to use the boat too. You know what I mean? So, um, but it's very easy. It, you know, the, the thing's super durable. My crew does everything. You know what I mean? We never really beach launch. We're always launching from the, uh, from the pongas because, that way I can access 
all of Cedros, I can go to Chester's Rock and we can kayak. I can go to Natividad and we can kayak. Benitos, like all over the place. We might find tuna somewhere out there mid-channel. We're going to go kayak that and, you know, fish tuna. Who knows? You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, if it's kayak weather, I do enjoy it. it it's awful fun. And uh, even if someone came down and they didn't want to kayak, it was just strictly a ponga trip. I always try to talk them into at least a couple hours because they'll they'll see the water they'll catch fish and feel such a different experience than than just being in a ponga you know it's really your you're kind of one-on-one -on -one, even if it's with a calico you know what i mean and then when that thing comes to the side you got to pull it up in your lap and do all that so it's it's pretty darn fun you know what i mean it's pretty darn fun it's worth it's it's fun for me because i have the best boats out there and so to show someone uh the, you know the nicest kayak that there is and they're they're not paddling you know you're pedaling you know what i mean and you can just go miles you know i'm going next week with my daughter that that's all she talks about is going kayaking you know what i mean like she she loves it because it's so easy because she's not paddling she's pedaling like it's a like a bicycle you know what i mean so yeah we we, we love the kayaking part of our gig um but you know we will ponga fish we'll do whatever anybody wants i mix and match throughout the trip half a day kayak other half ponga whatever everyone needs. I mean, you're on vacation. Like I said earlier, you're on vacation with me. I want to make sure we're doing what you want to do and having a good time. I think you just uh, took the question out of my mouth and also Carrie's question too. Can half the group go out on Hobies and the other half on Pangas? Yeah, hundred percent. That's the beauty of it. You know, I put three people on a boat. Um, and so if we talk about uh, what we're going to do the next day over dinner, um, I sit there, I'm having dinner with everybody and we discuss what everyone wants to do the next day. And then my crew's, uh, you know, finishing cleaning up everything. And then I go outside and I tell them uh, how to set us up for the next day. And if that's what we're doing, you know, a few people want to kayak. So I get one boat set up to go kayak. And then I, uh, if other, the other group wants to go, you know, ponga fishing and they don't have to go to the same spot. doesn't matter where you go. You know what I mean? Like the boats are independent. One, you know, once a boat you're on that boat, like you have everything you need for the day. So if, the, if one boat goes one way, another boat goes another way, like, it, you know, that's totally fine for me, for me, you know. Dude, I can't wait, man. Uh, Todd from CB Metal Art is asking, how is the sheephead fishing down there? Wow. Insane question. Very insane question. That's a smart dude right there. Like that guy's smart. It is ridiculous. Like that's the best word to use. Ridiculous, you know, and who found that fishery? Kevin Nakata, Sea Samurai. Like that dude right there, gnarly fisherman. He's the one that showed me how crazy the sheephead fishing is there. I've caught plenty of them on my flat fall on plastics. You know, they're aggressive. If you're fishing down low, like you're, they're going to bite. I've caught them on, you know, yo-yoing iron, all kinds of different things. But man, you bring down some shrimp and you tie off to a piece of kelp somewhere and you chum some of those, pull the heads off and everything and kind of chum your area, wait 10 or 15 minutes, you'll be shocked. Like you'll be shocked at the size and the power and the taste of those things. They're, they're great. I can't, I can't eat them anymore myself. Um, I'm allergic to shellfish and they have a lot of iodine in them. Um, but we, we love catching them and they make fantastic fish tacos. Um, they, they make fantastic. We, we call it fish Veracruz. We cook it in uh, this like mayonnaise, mustard and uh, salsa pato sauce that we do. Um, and kind of poach it um, is very, very, very good eating. And it's ridiculous, ridiculous fishing. If someone wants to come down and do it, let's talk about it before your trip. I'll probably tell you, bring a box of shrimp and I will definitely put you on the sheephead fishing of your life. hundred percent. hundred percent. He says, love fishing goats. And that, that's definitely true for sure. Hey, I know I've, you know, browsing around your website plenty of times, just obsessed about my trip and all that coming up. I can't help but to, but to notice the crystal crystal clear blue water on the island. It's beautiful and all that. You also have a couple of bar barbecues going on, and it seems like you're feeding people right on top of the beach. Is that still the case? Yeah, yeah. So I'll touch on that in just a sec, but let us let me just mention that that rad website that I got and all that booking and all that crazy stuff that's going on on that thing now is all because of Katie, not me. I did not do that, everybody. That is Katie. She deserves 100% credit. She is a badass. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but she's a badass and she knows she is. So that website's like that because of her and it'll continue to be awesome. 
She's got all these great ideas of posting daily on our Instagram stuff, like giving people like up to date stuff, what's going on and using the website. Same thing for all of, all of her, uh, you know, advertising and things like that. So that all, everything, all credit to Katie on that. And thank you very much, Katie. Like I'm very appreciative of that. Yes. That water is crazy blue. And yes, we love to barbecue on the beach. It's like something fun I get to do. You know, you got groups of 12 or 20 people. You can't really do that. Groups of six, even if only half the group wants to do it one day, it's the most fun. You've never had better beach combing than you would on an island that's 60 miles offshore, halfway down the Baja coast. Trust me. Look at some of the photos that are on our website, giant whale bones that we're finding. You know what I mean? Like, all kinds of stuff. You, you just see stuff, you know, we here in Southern California, like we comb our beaches, we comb them clean. Everyone wants to see the corduroy, you know what I mean? Like you don't get to find seashells, you know, or, or anything anymore. Down on Cedros, you see nature, you see what's going on in the ocean, like things die. That's what happens in nature. And they end up washed up on beaches from birds to seals, to whales, to dolphin. I've seen it all on the beach. You know what I mean? And it's, you know, it's really fun beach coming and it's fun to watch the people because everyone does the same thing. I'll take them to the beach. We'll have a great lunch. They all go take a walk and they come back with a pile of stuff, you know, shells and bones and everything else. And then it's sitting there and then it's time to get back in the pond or the kayaks. And they're like, all right. And they just kind of leave it right there. You know what I mean? Like, but it's funny to watch people gather all this stuff because it's so neat. You know what I mean? To see, we just don't get to see that anymore. And uh, that Island is so beautiful. Like, it, it's just nice to not be focused only on the fishing, but to really take it all in and really absorb that island because it's awesome, man. It, it, it's an awesome place. It, there's a lot of dirt down there. There's a lot going on, two 4,000-foot peaks and all these crazy canyons. And you come around one cove and it's blowing howling wind and you go up to the next corner and it's flat glass and you can see 40 feet down. Like, it's just it's amazing, you know, and it's fun to show people everything. And when you take the time and slow down a little bit and go on the beach and relax for an hour. It's just an hour. It's an hour out of your day. You know what I mean? That's all it is. It's the best hour of the day. I guarantee it. You know, like, so yes, I still really enjoy doing it. It's not for every group. A lot of guys are just too hardcore. They, you know, if I'm going to put them on the water for 11 hours of fishing, they want to fish and I get it. I, I'm down with that too. I do it all, but it's, it's, uh, if somebody wants to have a nice beach barbecue, I, I'm completely down with it. Like we love doing that. Oh, for sure. Um, Joel's ch checking in. He's asking, what's the best way to catch a trophy yellow? You know, there's so many good ways, but I think that one of my newer techniques to get a bigger one, it's obviously going to be probably slow trolling like a live bait, but what I'm putting on all my boats this year, cause I did a lot of it last year for my kayak, um, and, or, you know, two years ago, whatever, 2019. Um, we did it a little bit from the Ponga too, but I got downrigger weights on all my, on all my boats now. And so I think slow trolling a live bait down, maybe 20, 30 feet. Like, obviously we're getting, we get good ones all the time, big ones, 30, 40 pounders, like, you know, up, up top, but there's probably fifties that are hanging down below all those other fish waiting for maybe a little easier of a meal or something. You know what I mean? So uh, the past couple of years, like my, our biggest fish, especially from my kayak have come with that technique, like using, like I would use like 16 ounces or, you know, one pound. I, I had these pieces of rebar that I was using for my kayak and I would just send down my bait, you know, down, I zip tied on one of those AFCO clips and I sent that thing down 30 feet. And that's how I was getting all my big ones. Another good one, obviously is the SP minnow. Like we get a lot of big fish in close, like fishing for bass, believe it or not. Like those things really roam the shallows. Um, we see them all the time. Um, I, I think probably our biggest fish yellow tail wise is going to be coming from Chester's rock soon. I I've seen five footers over there, man. I'm, I'm talking giants, you know, when we're over there fishing for calicos and stuff like that, like absolute giants. I, I don't, if I go to Chester's rock and I'll tell everyone this, 80 pound spectra, 80 pound leader, 80 pound spectra, 80 pound leader, like nothing else. Like you need it, man. Like I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's if you hook one of those big yellows, you won't get it unless you have something like that. And I'll tell you the smallest bass does not care about your line. Either they're so aggressive over there. You know, you, you do not need to uh, throw 
throw light line. Like you'll just lose too many fish. You know what I mean? And so 80 pound to 80 pound, like, believe it or not, like that's just how we do it over there on, on your extra heavy bass gear. Man, you are getting me all fired up and we're still in May. <laughs> right. But, uh, Tom is asking, what is your favorite time of year down there? You know, uh, for me, man, it's later in the season, believe it or not, like October, November, even early November. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on around that island late in the season. All those fish, all the yellowfin and everything else that we catch up here in San Diego area and even further, a little further north. They all come right back by me later in the season. After we get our first big storm up here, everything runs straight to me down there. That There's crazy marlin close to the island, man, like five miles off. Like that stuff's around. If the water's still warm or that's kind of like the warmest time of the year sometimes for the water, that's when you see lots of wahoo, tons of Dorado. Dorado are swimming right along the beach around Cedros that time of year. It's just a, it's a real exotic time of year for me. I, I, I like later in the season, obviously July and August, you know, September, the place is biting super, super good, but October and then into November, like weird stuff starts happening down on that Island. And uh, like, it's just, it's great fishing for like really multiple species in a day of really cool stuff that you don't get to experience around here for sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I cannot wait, dude. Uh, Todd's clarifying. So you're saying 50 to 50 or 80 to 80 and anywhere in between in terms of the gear type, right? Yeah. So pretty much I, I use 65 pound floral or 65 pound, uh, spectra minimum on all my reels. I have 65 or 80. Those are my, that's, that's what I have on all my reels for spectra. Um, and then leader wise, if you're coming to Cedros, I would bring 40 pound up to 80 pound. Like that's really what you need. Most days you're probably going to leave the 40 pound behind and you're going to fish like 60 and 80 because you'll see they're biting. So you might as well be ready because, you know, if a trophy hits, like I, my SP minnow does not hit the water unless I have 60 pound minimum. Same with my flat fall. There, it just does not go in the water. The calicos don't care down 60 feet. I'll catch a hundred in a day and it'll be on 60 pound. You know what I mean? Like they're, they, but if you hook that, big 30 35 pound yellow while you're doing the same thing because they're down there with them or if you hook a big grouper or something like that you're not going to get them unless you have heavy line you just won't and like i said you're still having 100 fish days on the bass so why not fish the heavier line you know what i mean so yeah 65 to 80 pound spectra anywhere from 40 to 80 pound leader like it's you know and I'd probably leave the 40 at home i have plenty of it down there if you came fishing with me i got plenty at the tackle shop if all of a sudden something was happening if I was out there on the boat, man, and you, and you needed something, you just call me. Like I, I have so much tackle and gear on my boat or my kayak every single day. Like I want people to catch, you know, and I, Wayne was there, Wayne, your boss was there one trip fishing with someone else. He didn't have hooks. I think it was hooks that I gave him. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter who, like, I want everyone who comes down there to catch fish. I don't care who, what charter you're fishing with. Like the goal is that you have a great time and you come back and go fishing with one of us again. And, it helps support the island. You know what I mean? It, it really does. For sure. For sure. And it definitely shows for sure, man. So, you know, obviously, you know, we've talked quite a bit about the tackle, about the fish, about the species, about all that stuff. How do we actually get down there? What's the whole process when you book a trip from the moment you book? And I know Katie has a lot to do with that. Shout out to Katie. She's great. Awesome. I mean, she's taking care of all, all my guys too with very much ease, but how do we get down there and what's the whole process, man? So uh, for us, I'm, I'm still flying out of Ensenada. Um, once our tour is, you know, when we're full and we're running, you know, June to October and we're back to back, then we're going to, we're definitely going to have our own charter plane. Uh, like I did a couple of years ago. Um, it just, you know, losing a year, we start, you know, lost a few people, of course, we're picking up new people. Once we get super busy, we're going to be running that charter probably from TJ. Right now, though, uh, for us, you'll meet us at Fast Lane Kayaks uh, down there in Dana Landing. Safe, free parking. Ron and his guys take care of our cars. They keep an eye on everything. Um, it's a nice place, nice place to park. There's ice right there for afterwards. You know what I mean? Very easy to buy ice for your cooler uh, when, you know, if you're bringing fish home. Uh, then from there, we jump in a charter van that I, that I, that I rent and takes us down to Ensenada. And then we get on the plane uh, from there on, in Ensenada. Um, you know, right now, 
I, I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good about my route. Uh, you know, uh, Mexico's changed their rules just in the past week. Um, it's getting more and more strict flying out of the TJ airport. And, you know, they're requiring COVID testing and all kinds of other stuff. And, uh, you know, w- when you drive across, the, n- those requirements aren't there right now. So, um, you know, we're, we're feeling, you know, pretty good, pretty good about our route this year for right now. And uh, it, it, it's great. You know, we have a really nice restaurant that we go sit at and uh, have a nice breakfast if we're on that morning flight. Um, and we have a great, uh, you know, taco restaurant that we go to where the, the people know us there and, and stuff like that. So, um, you get to see a little bit of Ensenada. You're not there long. We, we don't, uh, I don't go down first thing in the morning. If we have an afternoon flight, you know, we go down later in the morning. Um, so we try to, you know, really plan it like that. So our travel isn't too much. And, uh, a lot of times if we get down there on that first flight, we're fishing that first day too. It's something I really like to do, even if it's just for a couple hours, it's nice just to get out on the boat. Um, you know, kind of get your tackle wet a little bit and, you know, make a few casts, you know what I mean? And, um, kind of get, kind of get a feel for things. It's always nice to get, get a little action in on that first day. You know what I mean? So I I like to do that, uh, for everybody, if we can, you know what I mean? If we get down there in time. So, but that, that's kind of our route. That'll be our route probably for all of this year. Um, and then next year, if things change, we, you know, we start getting more busy Then we're definitely, you know, I, I would love to fly from Temecula again. That was a really fun route. Um, some guys liked it. Some guys didn't, you know, it was great, man. Like we never had fog. We flew to San Felipe. It took an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, you got out of the plane for 10 minutes, you know, went and got the visa real quick, jumped back in the plane hour and 10 minutes. We were on Cedros. Like, I don't know, but we were there at nine 45. I was on the water by 11. Like it was, it was crazy. You know what I mean? It was crazy. Going home was the same thing. Like you were back on that plane, you know, by 10 o'clock, you're in the air by 1 PM, you're in Temecula. So if you live in LA in an hour, you're home. You know what I mean? Like you had no border weight, you had none of that. So that's, it was nice. Like, and so I'm hoping to uh, get all that back going for us again, um, uh, real soon. But right now that we're, we're taking, we're, we're taking the van down. For sure. And you know, the booking process with you and Katie and all that very seamless, it seems like it's all inclusive and basically you pay one price and almost everything's taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, uh, that's what we try to do. Like we take care of your licenses and all of the, uh, bracelets and all that kind of stuff that we need down on the Island. That's all worked into your price. Uh, the only real extras is, uh, you know, there's a rod fee on the plane, uh, that used to be very nominal. And this year they decided to get a little bit more crazy. They taxed us pretty hard. I, I had some broken rods that I wanted to bring home on my last trip. And, I was pretty, I was kind of bummed. You know what I mean? Like what, you know, what, what they're asking me to pay for one way to bring home a broken rod. But uh, you know, so uh, you, you have to pick up that rod fee. Uh, we, we have uh, invested in 25 nice rods from Okuma. Uh, and uh, so we have nice gear, you know, fishing rods down there. If someone wanted just to bring their reels and uh, use our rods down there, like we're offering that to try to, you know, help people save on that cost. Um, uh, gratuity for the crew is another thing that, you know, it, you know, if you're into tipping and stuff like that, like you'd have to pick up that, um, we can't sell beer at, at our hotel. So, uh, there's a beer store in town. So, um, you know, if you, if you enjoyed, you know, adult beverages and stuff like that, like we can bring it to the beer store. Uh, we're, I, I'm a, I operate a little bit different, not trying to, you know, uh, control people or anything like that, but man, we're on this Island where we, it's super remote, super remote. And I'm all about having fun. But it's got to be, you know, it's got to be controlled because if something happens, you get hurt, like there's no help. You know what I mean? Like it takes hours and like it could be like a life threatening moment. So I'm kind of a little different about like, you know, I don't really like to bring alcohol out on the water. If we're barbecuing, I don't mind a guy having a couple beers, but, you know, like someone come and want to bring a case of beer out for the day and stuff like that, you know, like it, man, it's unsafe over there. You got to be careful. You know what I mean? And, and uh, that kind of affects the whole group. Two, like, you know, one person kind of affects the whole group like that, you know? So again, I'm not trying to monitor people or anything like that, but like, it's, it's just all about safety really for me and, and trying to show you a good time. And, you know, you want to party, man, partying is awesome, right? Cabo's 500 miles away. Just keep going South. Like that's what, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's come to Cedros to hang out, fish hard. You know what I mean? Have a good time. It's very primitive. there, very remote. You got to be careful. You know what I mean? You got to be careful. Like you got to be careful walking in and out of the stores. Like you're used to walking upstairs that the tread height and or the riser height and the tread is the same dimension. That's ADA code. That's, that's our handicap code in international Mexico. They don't got that. So you'll have all your stairs are different. And I can't even tell you how many guys have stumbled out of the store. You know what I mean? And that's all it takes is something crazy like that. 
and man, it's like trip over could be worse. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, we're kind of, you know, but that would be an extra, you know, you got to you know bring down your own beer money and then souvenirs. If someone, uh, there's a nice t-shirt store in town that we like to go to uh, kind of support the locals that way. Um, they sell hats and sweatshirts and tank tops and regular tees and stuff like that. You know, there's stickers in town, things like that. So, but that's it. Otherwise everything else is included. I take care of the, the plane, you're staying at my personal house. I take care of all that, all of your food. Um, we serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We have snacks. You know what I mean? You're never really hungry. That's for sure. If you are, you let me know. Like, I'll take care of it. The fridge is open door policy. Um, it's because it's all family style. Like, you come down and we're all just a group. The only time you're separated from the group is at night when you go to bed, which is the best time, right? <laughs> to be separate. <laughs> yeah. And to add on to your point, man, I mean, there's a time and a place to party. Cedros, you kind of want to take advantage of all that fishing, of all that whole experience, you don't want to risk that. Yeah, no, it, it, it's a big deal. Like, trust me, we do plenty of partying, you know what I mean? And a lot of it's at night once we're back to the, to my house and hanging out by the fire and we've had a nice meal. And I, I'm the first one to crack a beer when we get home. And I enjoy that after a long day of fishing. It tastes fantastic. You still got salt on your face. And man, you know, a, a nice tecate is, is it's delicious. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm Like I said, I'm the first one to be passing them out um it's you know just out there in the hot sun all day long you know what i mean like it, it doesn't it it leads to a bad time you know, it does <laughs> <laughs> yep for sure uh carrie's asking any restrictions as far as bringing reels on the plane zero zero i know like flying to Cabo and stuff like that you have a lot of issues with you know line and and all those kind of things no we don't have any of those problems uh don't bring any guns don't bring any ammo ammo is almost worse than the gun even an empty shell is probably one of the worst things you could have in your possession in Mexico. Um, you don't need a knife for anything. You can bring your pliers, but you don't need a pocket knife. Like you're going to be 100% safe. I promise. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, you just will, you know what I mean? So you don't need any of that kind of stuff. Those are all the things that are going to kind of get you in trouble, you know, partying at night at the nightclubs and bars that, which there's none on Cedros, but you know, anywhere in Mexico, like that's all the stuff where, you end up in trouble. You know what I mean? So um, those are the things like that, you know, would be a no bring, but absolutely your reels, any fishing equipment. You know, I, I bring fillet knives all the time, you know, because I need new ones. You know, we go through a lot of fillet knives down there and, you know, none of that's a problem. You know what I mean? But like for one, for a personal person, like you, you don't need any self-protection or any of that kind of craziness. You know what I mean? Come down on your vacation and enjoy. Like I got you. I'm your security. Trust me. Excellent, man. And, uh, you know, as we're wrapping up here, what's your schedule like this year? Any availability, any open spots that we can uh, hop down with you? Yeah, for sure. Like uh, definitely, uh, you know, give, give, go on the website or give Katie a call, um, at that, that new seven, seven, six, oh number. And, and, uh, you know, she'll, she'll take care of you. Uh, once she came on board, um, it was kind of funny. Like a, a lot of my trips, I had four, three, some fives, you know what I mean? And, you know, so she started figuring out the house and she's like, well, you have seven bedrooms. And I was like, yeah, you know, sometimes I like to keep that front one, you know, open just, you know, so I could have like, you know, just a little, you know, a little more privacy in the front house or whatever. And she's like, uh, no, that's an extra bed. Like we're, we're everything we're taking, we're, you know, all beds full, you know? So with that said, there's spots available, uh, uh in every month, you know, because I might've had five guys signed up. So there's one extra bed, you know, there, uh, in another bedroom, you know what I mean? So, um, uh, but yeah, I would say just about any, any month, August is probably the only month that someone would probably have a tough time getting in. Um, but I think, uh, we do have, there's one four day weekend in August, I think where there might be two or three spots left. Other than that, uh, all the other months, definitely, you know, they, they have spots. So yeah, contact Katie or even, you know, call myself, whatever, like we're, uh, you know, love to have you come down and, and hang out with us for sure. Let us, let us show you, uh, what Sagers is all about. Excellent, man. Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but uh, Jeff, any last words, man? How do we get to go fishing with you, brother? Uh, you know, uh, check our website, sagosislandfishingcharters.com. Like that's the best way. Katie has done a phenomenal job. Like you go on that website, it has everything you need right there. It had the trip schedule. She, she built this rad schedule and everything's there. You can book right from there. If you want to call me directly and talk about Cedros, like if you're traveling with someone else or whatever, you just want some information, you give me a call directly, 760-412-2507. But for everything, like booking purposes, like, yeah, you definitely want to uh, get with Katie 
and uh, she'll she'll take care of it. Like you said, it's it's seamless. I've never had that before. Like this is the year uh, that all that is happening for me, and it's uh, man, it makes it really nice. You know what I mean? Like people, uh, it's the whole package. Like I, I handle the fishing and all that, all the back end stuff pretty well. Once we're at the island, you know what I mean? I got you good. Like uh, no worries. But like having someone to help run the office and stuff like that, I see the importance. Once I hired someone that's that knows what they're doing and and just ran the whole thing and organized it all, like man, it's you see the importance of it, and it's so great. It's so great. It's nice having someone like that on your side, for sure. And and Katie is a stellar, stellar individual, great human being as well. Jeff, I'm counting down the days till July, man. I can't wait to go down there and, and go visit you, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm stoked, dude. I'm going to show you a good time for sure. Like, I can't wait to meet you and your buddies and uh, show you my place, let you hang out, man, and meet my crew and just uh, come on a vacation, man. I know you'll be back next year. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. <laughs> for sure. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, apologies for the uh, technical difficulties earlier. Um, we really appreciate your support. And uh, for more information about CCA, ccacalifornia.org. Got plenty of events coming up. I know Jeff's going to be there at uh, the San Diego Chapter Banquet, June 12th. Jeff, I can't wait to see you there, man. It's going to be it's yeah. going to be awesome. <laughs> awesome. And then two days later, I leave for Sedros with Wayne. So yeah, that's pretty that's pretty rad. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> awesome, Jeff. I appreciate it, man. Really, really appreciate Thanks it. So much, man. Oh yeah. Talk to and you all soon. Talk to you later. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.